in our previous uh, lecture we started uh, with a brief introduction to lubrication theory. So, uh, we will have a brief recapitulation of the physical situation what we are trying to address. So, let us say that uh, there is a passage where the lateral length scale is much much less than the axial length scale and uh, the let us consider this example where the top wall moves with a velocity relative to the bottom wall and that velocity may be arbitrary with uh, the velocity components along x and y. So, the situation is two dimensional and uh, one of the important hallmarks of the particular arrangement is that the existence of a physical small parameter. The small parameter is in case in this particular case the ratio of the transverse length scale to, to the axial length scale. So, with this uh, uh, arrangement let us try to see that how we can uh, physically describe this arrangement through governing equations. So, let us come to the board and explain uh, try to explain that. Uh, so, the physical situation let us draw a schematic that you have two walls and uh, you set up your x and y axis like this. The gap h is a function of position and time and you have an arbitrary velocity of the top wall relative to the bottom wall. The axial length is L c and the scale that we consider in the transverse direction. So, uh, I mean because h is continuously varying you uh, may consider the scale to be any local height provided that the variation in the height is not strong. That means, there is a weak variation or slow variation of height as we move along x. If there is a slow variation in height there is not, not much difference between this height, this height, this height and this height. So, any one any particular height you can choose as the characteristic scale uh, just as an example if this height is h o then we can consider that as a characteristic length scale. I mean if this is the maximum height then if the maximum height by L c is small then all the other heights are also much smaller than the corresponding axial length scales. So, with this particular arrangement and uh, we have to keep in mind also that the top wall moves with a velocity v and as we discussed yesterday that we will uh, indicate that dimensional quantities with prime and non dimensional quantities without prime. So, that we will consider here and uh, we will begin with the continuity equation. So, let us assume that it is an incompressible flow. So, the continuity equation for two dimensional incompressible flow. So, this is x prime and this is y prime in terms of dimensional coordinate. Dimensionless they will be x and y. So, let us uh, describe the orders of magnitude of various terms. So, what is the order of magnitude of this? 
Let us say that the characteristic scale is uc, characteristic velocity scale is uc. Now what is uc we do not know because it depends on the physics of the problem that what is the characteristic length scale. If the characteristic length scale is, uh, sorry, what is the characteristic velocity scale? Characteristic length scale is described by the geometry, but character characteristic velocity scale is described by the physics of the problem. So, if the top plate velocity is the dominating physical influence, then its velocity along x will be the characteristic scale. However, if there is some body force which is dominating towards dictating what is the velocity, then there will be a velocity scale dependent on that body force. We will see that how that can be obtained. So, at this stage u c is totally arbitrary. It depends on the boundary condition or the physics of the problem for us to decide that what is the appropriate choice of u c. Okay. So, these scales as u c by l c where you do not know a priori what is u c. These scales as what? Say this is V c by H naught. So, as we have discussed earlier that these two terms they must have the same scale, so that the net effect is 0. So, that means V c by H naught is you can say is of the order of U c by L c that means V c is of the order of U c into H naught by L c. H naught by L c we, des we denote by epsilon. So, V c is equal to epsilon into U c. So, that if epsilon is small that means there is one dominant flow direction that is also another hallmark of the lubrication theory that you have a dominant flow direction because the dominant flow direction is dictated by u and not by v. However, you cannot trivially neglect the momentum transport along y because of maybe possibility of existence of a pressure gradient may be due to body force, some body force may be there and uh, uh, also I mean you may have some uh, sort of motion along y because the plate is being pulled or pushed vertically upwards or downwards that might be a possibility. So, either the kinematics or the kinetics may decide that there may be some significance in the momentum transport along y although the velocity component along y is one uh, is significantly less as compared to the velocity component along x. Okay. So, uh, this is this is the what the continuity equation gives then let us write the x momentum equation. put dash in all the uh, parameters just to indicate that they are dimensional parameters. Okay. Now, we will find out so, we will now non dimensionalize various terms. So, we will write u is equal to u dash by u c, v is equal to v dash by v c, 
x equal to x dash by L c, y is equal to y dash by h naught, p is equal to p dash by p c, f x is equal to f x dash by f x c. I am trying to derive a very general formulation where whatever body force may be there is present and uh, so the normalization factor for the body force depends on what physically it is. Now certain scales we have already discussed like U C, V C, L C, H naught but we have not discussed about what is P C and what could be F X C. What could be F X C depends on what is actually acting as a body force along X. So in a general treatment it is difficult to prescribe what could be F X C, but it is possible to prescribe what is P C and we will try now to find out what is an appropriate pressure scale that is one of the key parameters in the lubrication theory. So now uh, let us, uh, oh, one thing we have not yet done, the time T is equal to T dash by T C. So there are different possibilities of the, of choosing the time scale like advective time scale, diffusive time scale, forcing based time scale, we have seen that these are there. Now here an appropriate choice would be an advection based time scale, there is no forcing here and the advective time scale will naturally have this term of similar effect as that of this term, these terms. So if these terms are not important, this term will not be important. So uh, the advection time scale, so what is T C then? T C is L C by U C, okay. Now let us write the various terms in a dimensional form and certain non-dimensional parameters will come out of that. So rho what will be this term uc by tc into del u del t plus u c square by l c del u del x plus v c u c by h naught that was u del u del x this is v del u del y is equal to minus p c by l c del p del x plus mu u c by l c square del 2 u del x 2 plus u c by h naught square del 2 u del y 2 plus f x into f x c, right. Next uh, we will make some simplifications 
So, T c is L c by U c. So, this becomes U c square by L c all right U c square by L c. This is U c square by L c. Now, V c by H naught is same as U c by L c from the continuity equation. So, this also becomes U c square by L c. So, the left hand side let us write the next step you have rho u c square by l c as common into del u del t plus u del u del x plus v del u del y is equal to minus p c by l c del p del x plus mu u c by h naught square Next, maybe let us utilize the top part of the board. So, when we are writing these equations, what appears to be a small parameter to me is the size of the board. Because uh, I mean, whatever you write, it does not fit either in the left or in the right or in the top, in the bottom. So, uh, that is at, at least one small parameter. Now, uh, let us continue with uh, this equation in the top. So, uh, maybe a little bit down we write so that it is covered by the camera. Uh, so, uh, what we do now is let us try to find out what is a appropriate pressure scale, what is P c. Okay. So, we have to keep in mind that the pressure scale, see the dominant pressure gradient term, first of all uh, forget about the pressure scale, first of all what we do is that we multiply both sides by h naught square by mu u c. Okay. This h naught, so basically to get rid of this, we multiply both sides by h naught square by mu u c. So, rho u c square by l c into h naught square by mu u c. Now, let us look into various terms. See, one has to keep in mind that the order of magnitude of various terms depend on how the terms are non-dimensionalized. For example, 
see there is a key difference between normalizing with an appropriate scale and any non dimensionalization for example in the problem that we have we have we have been discussing you could non dimensionalize y as y dash by lc as well right because lc is also a length but that is not a proper non normalization that is not a proper scaling based normalization since y dash its range is from 0 to h 0 not 0 to lc so if you normalize a variable with its range then the dimensionless parameters are constrained to be within 0 to 1 in terms of order when the dimensionless parameters in terms of order are constrained to be within 0 and 1 then all their derivatives are also constrained to be within the order of 0 to 1 so that means you can say you can safely say that this is of the order of 1 if this is of the order of 1 you can now quickly convert to a conclusion that this is of the order of epsilon epsilon square sorry not epsilon of the order of epsilon square so because this is of the order of epsilon square we can conclude that this term is asymptotically smaller than this term so whenever you are considering an asymptotic expansion formally this term will not come out to be important but from physical arguments you can tell it without doing any asymptotic expansion into h, h not square by mu uc right this into h not square by mu uc the next observation is that in a situation where this term is of the order of 1 and there is a competition between viscous force and force due to pressure gradient an appropriate choice of the pressure scale should be such that this is of the order of 1 so that you will get a term like just dp dx so this gives a choice for pc so what is pc So PC by LC is equal to mu UC by H0 square. So that means PC is equal to mu UC into LC by H0 square, right? So, this we can write as multiply both numerator and denominator by LC and H0 by LC is epsilon. So, this is mu UC by epsilon square LC. Okay. Now what is this term? Let us calculate this. This is rho uc into lc by mu into h naught by lc square, right? 1 uc gets cancelled, so 1 uc into lc 
by mu into h naught by L c square. So, what is this? This is nothing but the Reynolds number, Reynolds number based on L c and this is epsilon. So, this is epsilon square. And finally, the last term, the multiplying factor, what is this? In place of H naught, you can write L c square by mu u c epsilon, epsilon square. So, the final equation in terms of epsilon is Reynolds number into epsilon square del u del t plus u del u del x plus v del u del y is equal to minus del p del x plus epsilon square del 2 u del x 2 plus del 2 u del y 2 plus f x f x c into L c square by mu u c epsilon square. Which one? Last one. Yes, yes, right. So this will be F, this will be L C square and this will be epsilon square, right? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, epsilon square, L C square, right? So, this is epsilon square will be in the numerator, right? Epsilon square LC square. So, now can you tell from this equation just by looking without making any mathematical treatment or anything that which terms have potential importance relative to the other terms or which terms? are potentially less significant as compared to the other terms. See here you have certain terms which are of the order of epsilon square and epsilon being small order of epsilon square will make it significantly smaller as compared to order of 1, right. So, this term and this term you may well argue that well this term has also epsilon square, but that is a dangerous conclusion to talk about because you really do not know what is the scale of f x, f x c. Okay. So, it might so happen that adjustment with the scale of the f x c will not eventually make it of the order of epsilon square, although elusively epsilon square is happening to be there in the numerator. So, we cannot make any conclusion of the relative dominance of this force or not, because simply we do not know what is f x c. Not only that, we do not know what is u c. So, u c depends on the physics of the problem as we discussed. So, we do not know what is f x c, we do not know what is u c. So, just by looking into this term, Although it contains epsilon square, that does not mean that eventually when all the expressions are substituted, finally it will be also of the order of epsilon square. Therefore, we cannot conclude that this term is trivially negligible, but we can conclude that these two terms are trivially negligible. That means, if you make an expansion, if you write an expansion u equal to u 0 plus epsilon u 1 plus epsilon square u 2, this is called as an asymptotic expansion. 
in this way you expand u like this v is equal to v 0 plus epsilon v 1 plus epsilon square v 2 like this p is equal to p 0 plus epsilon p 1 plus epsilon square p 2 like this. You may well argue that if we make this asymptotic expansion, how will we ensure that this expansion is justified? This expansion is justified only there if there are two, pos two possible, I mean two important constraints that are obeyed. One epsilon is small that we have ensured, the other is that these parameters u0, u1, u2 these are constrained to be within 1 and that is ensured by considering appropriate scales for normalization and that, that is why we are actually doing it in a dimensionless form. Otherwise, we could have worked on this with a dimensional form as well but the dimensionless form gives us this possibility that we are dealing with individual parameters which are of the order of 1. Dimensionally if we are handling these parameters that we cannot ensure, dimensionlessly we can ensure by choosing suitable scaling parameters. Okay. So, uh, now if you substitute you will see just let us do it mentally because if we I mean this board does not give me enough space of writing all these expansions. So, let us just do it mentally and from that we can figure it out. So, here you will get u 0 plus epsilon u 1 plus epsilon square u 2 just substitute in place of u u 0 plus epsilon u 1 plus epsilon square u 2 in for v also like that for p p 0 plus epsilon square plus epsilon p 1 plus epsilon square p 2 for u also like that. Okay. So, when you do that you will see that the dominant terms of the order of 0 will be what of the order of epsilon to the power 0 that is what I am calling of the order of 0 of the order of 0 means of the order of epsilon to the power 0. So, of the order of epsilon to the power 0 which terms will remain? this term will definitely not be there because there is a epsilon square multiplier. So, you will get 0 is equal to minus del p 0 del x plus del square u 0 del x square and the body force you it is better to retain because you do not know what is the scale what is the appropriate scale. So, plus f x f x c epsilon square l c square by mu u c. y square right then y square. If no body force is present then the last term is not important. So, then we are left with an equation which is del p 0 del x is equal to del square u 0 del y square that is the leading order equation and in lubrication theory we do all the calculations using the leading order equations only because that gives the dominant effect. Now, there may be an interesting yes, no, no, no that is what I told that it is this is illusion you do not know what is u c, you do not know what is f x c, you do not know that uh, what is the net effect. So, in the leading order the body force may be dominant. Okay. So, we should have a provision for keeping it and 
if the body force is not dominant in the leading order that has to be des, de, that has to be considered from the physics of the problem not not from anything else then you drop this term now a very interesting point before we move on to the y momentum equation the interesting point is that out of pressure and viscous stress which is more dominant in lubrication theory let us see so when you are writing the pressure okay the viscous stress the viscous stress is what viscous stress is of the order of like mu del u del y right so mu u c by h not right that is the viscous stress so h not is what epsilon into lc right so for a given lc the viscous stress scales with 1 by epsilon the pressure scales with 1 by epsilon square right so for small epsilon the pressure is what is dominating and not the viscous stress right so th see this i mean these are i mean certain things which are intuitive and certain things which come out uh, of the smallness of the parameter epsilon so that is one very important observation so that is why in lubrication theory at the end to calculate the force we use the pressure distribution only i mean people may argue that there are viscous stresses which are present then why do you just calculate the force only on the basis of pressure the reason is that in the leading order the pressure is what is dominating being scaling with 1 by epsilon square whereas the viscous stress scales with 1 by epsilon so to sum up the discussion on the x momentum equation we can see that the x momentum equation boils down to this we will come to the boundary conditions of, of this equation later on but now let us move on to the y momentum equation y moment rho del v del t plus u del v del x plus v del v del y is equal to minus del p del y plus mu we will add a dash to all the terms this is the dimensional form next what we will do we will use the suitable scaling parameters to non dimensionalize this so as usual we have v is equal to v dash by vc u equal to u dash by uc then x equal to x dash by x c y is equal to y dash uh, x c is l c right
y is equal to y dash by h naught t is equal to t dash by t c p equal to p dash by p c and f y is equal to f y dash by f y c. One very important point is that the pressure scale whatever is est established to the x momentum equation same pressure scale has to be considered for the y momentum equation pressure is just a scalar. So, its scale will not change as you go from one direction to the other. Okay. So, uh, let us quickly write the various terms in their dimensionless forms from our previous experience of writing it for the x momentum equation, we can do similar thing for the y momentum equation. So, rho, see how do you do these things quickly, just it is very important to learn how, how to do these things quickly without go getting into like, uh, like writing all the derivatives and all. See, this term will be u scale into v scale by x scale, right. So, and by using the continuity equation and the advective time scale, all the terms will have the same coefficient at the end. So, we write that u c into v c by l c into del v del t plus u del v del x plus v del v del y <coughs> minus p c by what h naught del p del y plus mu v c by h naught square Now, what is P c? Just tell me from your notes, what is P c? Mu by epsilon square L c. So, the next step what we will do? We will multiply both sides by H naught square by mu V c. Right, just the same way as we did for the x momentum equation. So, it becomes rho u c v c by l c into h naught square by mu v c. Now, let us just simplify this, this term. So, 
rho u c v c is u c into epsilon. So, u c square by epsilon l c anyway one v c gets cancelled out right. So, we do not have to care about this v c, this v c gets cancelled out with this. So, rho u c into epsilon square l c by mu. So, that is equal to what? Reynolds number into epsilon square, right? All right, this is. Then let us come to this term. Oh, we have not written del p del y, right? Let us write del p del y was missing here. So, this term is mu u c 1 h naught gets cancelled 1 h naught by epsilon is ok mu also gets cancelled so u c by v c into h naught by l c into 1 by epsilon square. Right? So, u c by v c gets cancelled with h naught by epsilon. So, this becomes 1 by epsilon square. And the last term if you want it you can simplify it, it will not make much of a difference so far as what we are doing currently because we have not assumed any body force, but just for the sake of completeness this h naught square is l c square into epsilon square and v c is l c into epsilon uh, sorry u c into epsilon. So, the last term becomes f y f y c into l c epsilon by mu uh, sorry l c epsilon square by mu u c. L c square epsilon, L c square epsilon, right. There is a epsilon in the denominator. So, f y, f y c, L c square epsilon by mu u c. Now, you multiply both sides by epsilon square, okay. So, let us do it at the top. you multiply both sides by epsilon square. The reason is 1 by epsilon square has come here. So, just to uh, bring it in the left hand side. So, you have Reynolds number into epsilon to the power 4 del v del t plus u del v del x plus v del v del y. is equal to minus del p del y plus epsilon 4 del 2 v del x 2 plus del 2 v del y 2 epsilon square del 2 v del y 2 plus f y f y c l c square epsilon cube by mu u c. Okay. Next, what we do? 
we make an as make an asymptotic expansion u equal to u0 plus epsilon u1 plus epsilon square u2 like that v equal to v0 plus epsilon v1 plus epsilon square v2 like that p equal to p0 plus epsilon p1 plus epsilon square p2 like that if you do that what will come out as a dominant term forget about the body force keep it separate what will come out as a dominant term only the pressure gradient term so the consequence of this if you neglect the effect of this term is simply this one because other terms are of the order of epsilon square epsilon 4 like that body force term of course what is the order we do not know but we are not keeping the body force in purview for uh, this particular discussion now there is one subtlety here we are considering that this term is of the order of epsilon 4 so this is small but what if the Reynolds number is large? But fortunately, we are dealing with microfluidic problems where the typical Reynolds number is small. So, we are dealing with low Reynolds number hydrodynamics. So, there is no chance of blowing this term up despite the smallness of epsilon. So, the assumptions that we are making are very much consistent with microfluidics. So, to uh, sum it up, let us write our x momentum and y momentum equations. So, you have 0 is equal to minus del p 0 del x plus del 2 u 0 del x 2 uh, sorry del y 2 and 0 is equal to minus del p 0 del y if you are not considering body force. That means that because this del p 0 del y is not is equal to 0 that means p 0 is not a function of y. So, this you could as well write as d p 0 d x. So, your governing equation actually boils down to this one. Okay? in absence of body forces remember this what are the boundary conditions now let us just draw the sketch that you have two boundaries this boundary say has a velocity u prime star i plus v prime star j Okay. this boundary is, ha is having this general velocity. So, to make one of these as 0 instead of giving both as non-zero components what we do is that we apply a translation of transformation of coordinates where you are using a coordinate system which is translating with respect to a velocity. u star prime along the x direction and we fit that coordinate system with the bottom plate. Okay. So, with respect to this, this will become 0, one of the components will become 0. 
Now, if this be the case, then what are the boundary conditions? This is y equal to 0, this is y equal to h, these are all, this h is dimensionless h. So, this if you want to put the put this as dimensional parameters, then just get rid of the dash that will make uh, sorry dimensionless parameters get rid of the dash. So, these are dimensional dimensionless parameters in terms of which the governing equation is written. So, we will write the boundary conditions also in terms of dimensionless parameters. At y equal to 0, what is the boundary condition? u 0 equal to minus u star right that is the no slip boundary condition relative to this moving reference frame which is drawn by the green color and at y equal to h what is u 0? 0. See the description of see one of the boundary conditions we have made 0 by using this transformation and this does not depend on what is v at that boundary. See this is what is a very critical thing that whenever we have made this transformation we have not cared about what is v, we have made the translation transformation with a translation along x nothing to do with y. Why? because in the leading order equation v has never appeared. In the leading order equation the net effect of the momentum equation along x, momentum equation along y as well as the continuity equation. The continuity equation we have forgotten its role, but its important role is to set up the scales for u and v, the relation between v c and u c that is set up by the continuity equation. So, the smallness of the parameter epsilon is established through the continuity equation. Now, so you can see there is no v0 which is appearing, so it does not matter what is v of the top boundary, so far as description of these boundary conditions are concerned. So, once we get this equation along with these boundary conditions, next we will make an attempt to solve this equation to get u0 and from that establish a governing equation for the pressure distribution. We will see that how do we establish a governing equation for pressure distribution for that we have to couple this equation with the continuity equation. We have not considered the continuity equation as yet because we have used only the x momentum and the y momentum. We have never used the continuity equation to close this system and as we have understood that to obtain a pressure distribution we must close the momentum equations in conjunction with the continuity equation. So, we will bring the continuity equation into the picture and couple that with this equation to get a pressure distribution and hence a force distribution on one of the plates say the top plate that we will take up in the next lecture. Thank you very much.